let's take the next few minutes to talk about the people who serve our country. A new policy goes into effect tomorrow. It affects transgender people serving in the military. The new rule says you can only serve if you agree to identify with your biological sex. So think about that, forcing someone to change who they are to defend who we are. Jess Arnold talked to an airman from Maryland who is dealing with a rather difficult decision. This is the grocery store in the bottom of the building that I live in. 24-year-old Lieutenant Aaron Griffin spends his days like any other medical student. Hang out with friends, do a lot of studying. According to my parents, I first said I wanted to be a doctor when I was like four years old, and I haven't really deviated from that side of things since then. The Air Force agreed to pay for his schooling, so he packed up and moved from his lifelong home in the Midwest to Maryland to fulfill that childhood dream. Before I joined medical school, I was an EMT, but also the military just has a shortage of doctors right now, and I knew that, and it's a place that I felt drawn to serve. Lieutenant Aaron Griffin, a patriotic, typical, all-American young man, right? That's how he feels and wants you to view him, but he didn't always look that way to the outside world. There were definitely instances and memories that I have of feeling just like, huh, something about me is not quite the same as everybody else. And transgender, it was something that I kept coming across and then being like, no way, that can't be me. So it was a number of years between kind of figuring out that like, transgender is something you can be to transgender is what I am. That realization has complicated his military experience from the get-go. The guidelines were anybody who has sought treatment is a no-go. So I had to kind of decide which is more important to me right now. Is it going to be transitioning or is it going to be being in the military? He chose the military. As he was applying, the new Obama-era protections for transgender service members came out. So, relief for a moment. But then, two weeks into school, President Trump tweeted, the United States government will not accept or allow transgender individuals to serve in any capacity in the U.S. military. It was crushing for a, a bit there. Yeah, it was really difficult to kind of accept this idea that this community that I had just found, that I had just joined, and that I was enjoying so much was as soon as I became myself was immediately going to kick me out. He didn't get kicked out then, but now the Pentagon is enacting a policy Friday, April 12th, that places new restrictions on transgender service members. It has here its DOD policy that no person solely on the basis of his or her gender identity will be denied a session into military services or discharged from the military services or subjected to adverse action or mistreatment. Do you feel like this memo still hold the military to that standard of not being discriminatory? It does feel discriminatory towards, to me. Saying that gender identity will not be the sole reason that you're kicked out or that you're denied a session or any of those reasons um, may be true, but it sometimes feels like a zero strike policy or because I'm transgender, I can't do anything else wrong because they'll use that against me. Lieutenant Griffin will be grandfathered in since he's already been undergoing treatment. But if he had wanted to join now, he would have had to weigh the same choice he did two years ago, serve as the woman he was born as biologically, or not serve at all. Which I think does a disservice to transgender people. That's why many advocates see the policy as a ban, even though the Department of Defense firmly denies this, saying it's a rule for a medical condition. President Trump tweeted in 2017 that his reasoning behind the restrictions is the medical cost, but the DOD says the purpose is to help the military maintain maximum readiness and remove certain medical exceptions. So why stay in the military? For me, it comes down to the people I serve with every day. These are my brothers and sisters in arms. It's something I feel very called to do. It's hard to say, I guess, when you look at an overall policy that doesn't feel that welcoming, but then the people you work with you feel so close to and are so welcoming. So Aaron's plan is to continue living his life and prove that he's an asset to the military. It's very weird to take a step back and look at it and be like, there are politicians who don't think I should be allowed to do what I'm doing. But for me, it's just, it is life. A life that probably looks a lot like yours. Grocery shopping, running, laughing. I think there's so many things about me that don't have anything to do with my gender identity. A bit of a nerd, um, a person who's really passionate about emergency medicine, and I hope that's what people remember about me most. Jess Arnold, WUSA 9.